Everybody can't say that. Everybody can't say it so well because they don't know. But we know we are. And we're able to say, whatever I love, the tongue is to say it's well with our soul. And so now Lord, feed our soul. Feed us the bread of heaven until we want no more. We don't want to see Andre Jefferson. We want to see Jesus. We see him, Lord. We know uh, that everything's going to be all right. We thank you in advance uh, for the spiritual food that we're about to receive. It's in Christ's name we pray together. Amen. 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 Well, Lord, if you would turn with me to the gospel as it is recorded by St. Luke, uh, the ninth chapter. St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Uh, and begin with verse number 22. Luke, the ninth chapter, uh, beginning with verse number uh, 22. And uh, you will find these words saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, then deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory, and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. Jesus said, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory, and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. Beloved, if you pray with me for a few moments, that the sermon must have a thing that this be it. Be proud of him. Be proud of him. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Jesus, Jesus says, yes. be proud of him. Proud. Come on, give the Lord a praise in here, everybody. Let's be proud of him. This uh, weekend, that we express our uh, gratitude and appreciation uh, to those soldiers who died serving this country. Many of them African American brothers and sisters. It's also a time when we remember other loved ones who have passed from this world on to the next. The cemeteries today, in fact, this whole weekend, are going to be packed uh, uh, with people who will go by grave sites and express in many wonderful ways uh, that they did not forget their loved ones. One of the best things that we can ever do, one of the most honorable things that anybody could ever do, is to remember those who mean so much to us as they have gone on from labor to reward. And all of this is because of our relationship with these persons, fallen soldiers, mothers, fathers, relatives, and other loved ones who have gone on. Well, uh, today there is a person in our lives that matters more uh, to us in this life and the next. And that is our Lord and Savior, and soon coming King, Jesus the Christ. And one of the things that he wants, uh, to, wants us to know is that he has expectations of his relationship with you. Jesus will not be satisfied with a rabid relationship that's full of holes and not satisfying to its fullest extent. He wants a solid relationship with us. Turn your neighbor and say, keep it solid. Keep it solid. <laughs> and in the relationship with Jesus Christ, yes, Jesus has some requirements. That's right, Jesus has some requirements. He doesn't just let everything go. There are some things that he requires, and he says, whoever will be ashamed of me in my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he'll come in his glory and in his Father and the holy angels. Jesus is saying very simply, if you're ashamed of him down here, uh, and, and you're ashamed of his words and what he taught, he will be ashamed of you when you get to face him in heaven. Come on, y'all talk to me now. Have you ever been in a situation when you and somebody that you've known for years, you go to a function, 
Ah, but when you get in a certain crowd, they act like they don't already know you. They'll be brand new on you. Hey, you folks, you know what I'm talking about. They get they, 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 so caught up in the highfalutin friends that they treat you like you are invisible. Uh, if you act, if you're like most people, that would get on your nerves. And in some cases, mad and sad that they did not consider you worthy enough to associate with. Jesus is saying he does not want people who know him as Savior to be ashamed of him in this sinful world. In fact, this text is for believers and unbelievers. The unbelievers should gladly, once you hear about what Jesus did for you on the cross, you should be ashamed to freely give him your life and confession as the Lord and Savior of your life. I wish I had a witness here. And as a believer, we should be gladly willing to identify with him at all times. We cannot be undercover Christians. We cannot be James Bond 007 Christians. Uh, Y'all don't talk to me. Let me tell you something. It is a sin to be ashamed of Jesus. How do I know? Because the text tells us he doesn't approve of it. Anything he doesn't approve of is a sin. You can't treat Jesus any old kind of way and he won't do it. I'm going to get shit with that out of the field. Let me tell you something. Uh, we, we always as Christians need to remember what we do in time affects eternity. Yeah. In other words, so many people that get caught up on something, but what we do now prepares us for eternity. If you live a hundred years, that is just not even a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. Man, the text is, the text is clearly showing that Jesus knows who's ashamed of them or not. You see, I'm like, man, Jesus sees not just your actions, but he sees your heart. Yeah. And from our heart, he expects us to be proud of him. Right. Jesus is simply saying, take up for him like he took up for us. Yeah. And I'm not saying, look, I cannot take too much of the liberty preachers. I, I can't tell you that you're going to hell if you're shaking him down here. The text does not allow me to say that. But what it does say, what it does let me say, it will be a very embarrassing and shameful moment when Jesus may look at you and say, why didn't you speak up for Why ain't it on Why didn't you why act like you didn't know me? Why do you, you, these sinful folks down here, you were worried more about what they had to say. I know what's shitty, but I got to Jesus expects us to recognize him and this relationship to the world. In fact, Jesus is not a spiritual side piece. You see, uh, uh, some brothers, they got a primary relationship. And then they got one on the side. They say, call it a side piece. You just there on the side. It's, not the main, I'm going there. It's not the main relationship, just some fun on the side. It will never be the primary one, it's just some on the side. And the side piece can't be seen in public. You gotta sneak around. You can't come through the front door. You gotta come through the back door and slide around. Uh, Preach on Great Junction. You can't use your real names. You, on holidays, you gotta celebrate by yourself because you're not the main piece, you're just a side piece. <laughs> Jesus, told me that, yeah, he don't, Jesus said, I'll not be your spiritual side piece. That you just call on me when you need something. Jesus said, I want to be the primary relationship in your life. I don't hide me in the box. Identify with me in the public and in every area of your life. And the consequence, I can say it's right in the book. And I gotta get this blood off my hands. Now that you heard the word, you're responsible for it. Anyone being ashamed of him uh, uh, is him being ashamed of you when you see him in his glory. And we're living in an age where Jesus expects us to take a stand for him. All right. The world is going to be increasing. I tell you, 
In the last and evil days, the world is going to become increasingly more hostile to Christians and followers of Christ. Uh, and people now more than ever, we have to be willing to take a stand for Jesus. Why should we take a stand? Because people will not get to know Jesus unless we're willing to take a stand for him and to identify ourselves with him. Now more than ever, every not just better when people are over, we need to invite hurting people to church and let them know that Jesus is the answer. We need to take a stand. We need to take a stand and identify with Jesus for righteousness. And in this world, there's some stuff that's right, and there's some stuff that's wrong. Yeah. And Christians have to take up a stand for righteousness and do as Jesus would have us to do. Yeah. And I get what you're saying here. Uh, some people won't come to Jesus unless you say something about it. Right. The Bible says in Romans 10 chapter, how can they hear what I'm preaching? And I'm talking to you got to be more than that. He said, people won't know about Jesus unless we open our mouth and tell them about what Jesus can do in your life. All right. Can I get a witness there, yeah? yeah. I get something that really devils. You make me feel bad. Right. I ain't trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to give you a warning. <laughs> trying to give you a heads up. Or how awkward it would be if Jesus said, I'm ashamed of you. Can I get a that here? So you got to understand that is the negative side. The reality is I'm trying to lift up the positive. Y'all don't get there a lot. When we did, let me tell you something. When we were doing things that we were ashamed of, Jesus stood up for us. Uh, you can make a big life down if you want to. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Some of us know we were yet sinners. We were yet in the midst of everything. But Jesus had already paid the price on the cross that we might have a right to eternal life. Why can anybody just keep it real? You ain't always been like you are. You ain't always been got every eye and crossed every T. Jesus had brought to us from the muck and the mire. So as Christians, we've got to, we should not be ashamed to speak up for Jesus when the world needs an answer. Let me tell you something. Reverend, I don't know all the Bible verses. Now Jesus says, say something. <laughs> if you heard that there was a 75% off sale of your favorite department store, you call somebody. <laughs> I didn't say 25, not 50. I said 75 for shots. Can I hear what you're saying? You can tell somebody, come on, get this blessing. Even if you don't have no money, find somebody and take advantage of this sale. We need to shout it from the housetop. Jesus is the answer for the world. Can I hear what you're saying? We ought to not ever be ashamed to praise Jesus. Jesus any way you want. All of us do not praise God the same way. But you ought to never be ashamed to praise his name. Is there anybody in here that you have been freed of what people think about you? It's time to praise the name of God. Come on, give me a secret. What I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. Savior of my life. 
And we ought not be ashamed. That's why we don't receive anybody to Jesus Christ, but we will never stop on Sunday morning. If you need Jesus Christ, every pastor in the world will ask you to come out of the pew and come up to the front and not be ashamed to say, I bow with Jesus. Lord, let, me, let everybody know I'm not ashamed when somebody when somebody sees that you're blessed. Don't you dare take the courage. You ought to say, I'm blessed because of Jesus. I got what I got. I have what I have. I drive what I drive. I live what I live. Because Jesus has been good to me. Don't you know I get tithes and offered, and the more I give, the more God gives me back. I am ashamed. That Jesus is our Lord. Yes. It's yes. a kind of a far concept. Mm. Uh, to a lot of folks, they don't mind him being saved. Come on, man. But is Jesus the Lord of your life? I mean, he's yeah. the boss. That means we trust him. Yeah. That means we believe he knows what he's doing. Huh? That he rules and he super rules. Wow. He, 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 yeah. When somebody says yes, God can override the whole process. He gets every crooked way straight. He gets every valley play. Nobody can compare with our God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Get up there in front of a, a crowd where everybody don't believe in Jesus. Right. 
And then we have to say, I want to thank God for this academy award. Thank God for life. And then realize where that help has come from. I look at young athletes and some of them are they're at the top of their game in prime and we're so proud when they said, I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this MVP award. Because you think I'll get MVP, but Jesus Christ is the real MVP of my life. I want to thank God for people who boldly identified with the Savior. Can I get a witness in here? Uh, I will not be ashamed of Jesus. Because sometimes the reality is we he wasn't ashamed of us. You ever thought about that? Some of us were young and foolish. Yeah. Somebody said, ain't no fool like an old fool. And what Jesus was passionate about. He says, I want you to be passionate about that as well. Jesus was passionate about seeking and saving that which was lost. That means that everybody that the world throws away, Jesus is saying, go get them. Anybody that's the underdog, Jesus said, I want you to go get them. Because Jesus said, I didn't come just for the folks that's already healed. He said, I came for the folks who are on 911. I came for the folks who are in the emergency room. I, I need to know that God still loves them. Is there anybody here that can tell the truth that you came to Jesus and it was 911? Or hell was breaking loose in your life? But somebody threw out the lifeline. Uh, one of the reasons that we take your memory and we enjoy it. It's because communion is not about you. It's about Jesus. It's about giving, letting him know. He said, I, you can't pay me back, but every now and then I want y'all to get together. And I want you to have this communion meal and do it in remembrance of me. I don't ever want you to forget what I did for you. Because when you start forgetting what Jesus did for you, it's going to, y'all don't talk to me. I remember uh, Reverend Edwin Johnson's story about a little boy who would never, help me out Chris, who would never invite his mother to any of his school functions. His mother was hardly disfigured and her face and hands, and he did not want to invite his mother to school events because he thought his friends would think less of him. And his mother found out that's why she wouldn't invite to all the events, and uh, mama cried all night long. And the little boy's uncle heard about it, and he said, boy, let me sit you down, let me tell you something. You don't understand why your mama is the figure in her face and hand. When you were a baby, there was a fire, and there were flames in your room, and your mother went in your room, and just before the flames consumed you, mama reached down and saved her. I wasn't going to look at you. gave way to pride because he began to tell all his friends that his mother is his hero in his life. He began to tell his friends that I wouldn't be here today unless my mama did what she did. That's why this morning, come on and tell the truth. You wouldn't be where you are unless Jesus had gone Yeah. <laughs>